Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we are working on percent word problems. Specifically, we are writing percent word problems as expressions. This will help us to be able to solve equations later, but for right now, we're just writing them out as expressions and leaving them in that form. Let's get into it. Today we are going to look at percents as decimals or writing a percent as a decimal. Quick review on that, shouldn't take too long. Then we're going to get right into beginner expressions and then several challenging expressions or challenging questions. If you want to skip right to the challenge questions, definitely um, feel free to do that if you feel you don't need a refresher on percents or those beginner expressions. Here are some percents that we are going to write as decimals. Every percentage you see there, we're going to convert into a decimal. The first one's actually probably the easiest. 43% would be written as 0 0.43. We can also, and it's often written as simply 0.43 without the zero there. You can get rid of the zero if it's on the left of the decimal, but everything on the right of the decimal you definitely need to keep. The next three percent examples are challenge questions. Oh, really, these ones are the tough ones that throw people off. 2% needs to be written as 0 0.02. There needs to be that space between the decimal and the two. If you simply write 0.2, that's actually 20%, and that's not what we want. So we can write this as 0 0.02 or simply 0 or 0 0.02 both are correct. Again, changing a percent to a decimal is shifting the decimal two places to the left or dividing by 100. Both of those things will convert a percent into a decimal. 115% can be written as 1.15. This cannot be simplified in any way. You can't get rid of the one on the left of the decimal. The only thing you can get rid of on the left of a decimal is if you do have a zero there. 7.8% would be 0 0.078, and that can be written without the zero on the left of the decimal. There we go. Here are several different percent to decimal um, conversions. Just a quick refresher. Hopefully we're pretty good at this moving in, but I did want to review it because you will need this skill moving into all of the question types we're going to look at. Let's look at our beginner expression. What is 25% of a number, n? So I've given us the percentage, 25, the variable, n, and called it a number. What we're doing now is writing an expression for what is 25% of a number. What we do is we take out the really most important pieces there, 25%, and we'll write that as a decimal, of is multiplication, and a number, n, we're just going to write as the variable. So that's it. 0.25 times n will give us this expression. However, I do not like this because when we write it down into a simple form, it's 25xn, and that's just not helpful for us. So we're going to stop using that x as a multiplication sign, especially when we get into using x as a variable. Instead, I will be writing it in one of two ways, either 0.25 times n with that dot as the symbol for multiplication, or more frequently, I'll simply be writing it as 0.25n. You just get rid of everything in between and it implies multiplication. That to me is the best way to write it. That's the way we're going to write it throughout this. But I just wanted to point out that we kind of are making a transition from using that x as a multiplication symbol and you may see it in both of those ways. All right. Now it's time for a practice question. I want you to tell me what is 8% of y. I want you to write it out as an expression. 3, 2, 1, go. Welcome back. I'm going to show you how to write that as an expression. 8% would be 0 0.08. Of is multiplication. And our variable y remains. Now what did I say about writing an x for multiplication? Don't do it. Either put in a dot or simply write it as 0.8 y. 
Again, I prefer this method. I think it's the best and most clear way of saying what it is that you're looking for. That means 8% of y. Now you might be saying at this point, those were pretty easy and you're absolutely right. We're getting into now the challenge questions. We're going to look at questions that are full sentences and we are writing them as expressions. This is our first one and probably the most simple of all of them. Here we go. Shoe sale, 25% off. Write an expression to show how much you save. Notice I underlined the question. Write an expression, how much you save. Because we're going to use the same information in the next question. And we're going to be not writing how much we save. How much we save is actually the easy part of this. So I'll start out by defining a variable. For us, I'm going to use the variable S for the cost of a shoe because shoe starts with the letter S and I'm just not very creative. So my savings, if I think about it, what are my savings? My savings are 25% of the cost of a shoe or 25% of S. This is how I would write it, right? 25% of the shoe cost, which means 0.25s or 0.25 times s. Exactly the same as what we did in the previous question, only it's written in a little bit more of a complicated way. We are looking for 25% of the shoe cost. That is how much I am saving. That's the discounted amount. Now we move into the next question and this becomes a big challenge. I want you to write an expression that shows the cost of the shoe, not the amount of the sale. This is a very different question and something that may confuse people at first when you see this type of question. That's why we did the first one first. Take a second and think about how you would do this. All right, we're going to go through the same steps we did with the previous one, only it's going to be a little more complicated. First off, define our variable. Cost of the shoe is S for shoe. Our discount. How would we think through our discount? Our discount would be the shoe cost minus 25% cent percent of the shoe cost. Does that make sense? We take the cost of the shoe, whatever it might be, and we subtract 25% of the shoe cost. So that will look like this, cost of the shoe, S, minus 25% of the shoe cost, or 0.25S. That's going to be our expression. And that may seem kind of complicated, and we, can't, we can simplify this a little bit further. But if you write that down, that's a correct expression to show the cost of the shoe. It's not incorrect to write it that way. I'm now going to take a little box over here on the side and show you how you could simplify this one more step. S is equal to 1S. Now if I take 1S and I subtract 0.25S, I will get 0.75S. And you might be saying 0.75, that's 75%. You'd be absolutely right. So instead of, if we did it this way, we would say instead of saying it's the shoe cost minus 25% of the shoe cost, instead we're saying, well, if we take the full shoe cost and we subtract 25%, what we're paying is 75% of the shoe cost. And that's what this expression would show. Now, you will see answers in both ways, but personally, when I'm punching it into a calculator, it's a lot easier to do this one I have down in the lower left-hand corner. However, um, for writing expressions, you will usually write the one that I have circled in orange or squared in orange, rectangled in orange. All right, now let's talk about um, another challenging question. If I buy 20 chocolate bars, I get a discount of 15%. So I'm going to write an expression to calculate my total cost. It's a little bit, one step more complicated, but I'm going to start in the same way. I need to define a variable. Chocolate bar cost, I'm going to say C for chocolate. My discount, if I think about it, my discount is similar to what I did before. It's the cost of the chocolate bar minus 15% of the cost of the chocolate bar. I could write this down as 
85% of the overall cost, or I can write it as cost minus 15% of the cost. Both are correct, both are fine. I just want to have both of them up there. Now I do have to take into consideration that to get this discount, I have to buy 20 chocolate bars. So I'm going to be multiplying 20 times that cost, right? Which is the cost minus the discount. Or I can write it out as this, 20 times 0.85 of the cost of the chocolate bar. And because everything in this has numbers, you can actually simplify it down to 17C. Um, what that means basically is that if you are getting this discount, you're basically paying the cost, the regular cost of 17 chocolate bars. That's what this says, 17C. But that doesn't even matter. Both of these expressions at the end, 20 times the cost minus 15% of the cost or 20 times 0.85 of the cost, both work for writing an expression to calculate your cost. I probably wouldn't simplify it down to 17C. That's just showing off. All right, now let's look into a question about increasing value because everything we've talked about so far has been decreasing value. I bought a rock and it increased in value by 12.5%. I bought a rock because I looked out my window and saw a rock. I couldn't think of anything clever. So I want to write an expression for how much this rock is worth now. That's pretty good. I'm going to say the value of the rock is R. That's my variable. I was thinking of making it D for like Dwayne the Rock, but I, I stuck with R. The value of the rock is R. The increase is going to be the rock value plus the percentage increase, which is 0.125. We converted 12.5% into 0.125 times the value of the rock. It can look like that. Now, this is another situation similar to the one we did in the other one. We could just add those together. 1R plus 0.125R means 1.125R. And you can, you can write it in both ways. And that's kind of interesting. If you think about it, I'm going to put a little thought bar up here. This means that it's now worth... 112.5% um, of its original value, which makes sense. It's worth the 100%, plus it increased by 12.5%, so it's going to have an overall value of 112.5% of its original value. Right? We don't know what the original value was, but we do have an expression that we can calculate it. So that's what we were looking for. All right, again, either of these two answers down here, most likely you will see the first one more often, R plus 1.25R or 0.125R. You'll see that one probably more often than you'll see the 1.125R. Although, again, I like the one on the right better personally. I, I use that more often in real life. All right, a couple things to remember. First off, a percent has to be written as a decimal. Remember those zero placeholders on the right of the decimal. Of means multiply. So if you ever see a sentence and you're wondering, you're trying to figure it out in your head, think of that word of as multiplication. That should help. And discounts or increases can be written in two ways. You can either add the numbers together and keep the variable, right? Um, like we were saying, or do the subtraction the way that we were talking about in our sample questions. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.